Good evening, Zion Wayside. Good to be back with you on our first Wednesday devotion after Easter. And so let's start the way that we should start. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I wanted to start by saying thank you. Uh, thank you to everybody who came out to worship at our four services on Easter Sunday uh, and even before, all through Holy Week, um, especially on Easter Sunday. I couldn't help but just smile and, and just be elated at uh, our Easter services and uh, the amount of people that came and attended worship. Uh, and how can you not be filled with that Easter joy, right? Um, just awesome. Loved it. Loved it. So thank you uh, for coming and, and worshiping with us on Easter Sunday. A big thank you to our board of Christian Ed who put together that breakfast that we had available, that continental breakfast. A big thank you uh, to them for setting that up uh, and, and keeping that stocked and ready to go. Uh, a big thank you to our music director, Kathy Stroman. Um, we had unique special music at every single service, um, I think even through Holy Week. Um, amazing. Amazing. Big thank you to her and, and Jamie, our organist as well, and everybody else who stepped up and, and sang uh, special music for us throughout Holy Week. Uh, this is an incredible place with incredibly talented people, and we thank you for sharing your gifts with us in that way. Uh, just, again, overall Easter experience was awesome. So thank you, Zion congregation and, and, and guests and visitors for being a part of that with us as we celebrated our risen Lord. But now here tonight, we are uh, moving back to Galatians. We have been working our way. I'm going to share my screen here. Um, working our way through the book of Galatians, uh, now all the way to chapter four. It's kind of been a while since I've, I've been here. Pastor Welter has been doing an awesome job uh, leading these for the past, I believe, couple chapters even. Um, so, we are going to uh, read a pretty important passage, I think, especially for our current day and age, um, kind of talking about outside influences. And what I mean by that is means of this world that have an effect on the way that we think. Um, entities uh, that exist in our world that 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 have an impact on how we think, um, that, that perhaps even overstep the boundary and, and supersede our ability to think in faith. Uh, outside entities that, that perhaps uh, take priority in, in controlling our thoughts and, and shape, well, maybe controlling isn't the right word, but, but shaping the way that we think, shaping the way that we uh, react to certain things that come about in our lives, rather than thinking according to scripture or God's word or according to the faith that we have, things like that. So that's what we're going to talk about here in this uh, short little three or four verses here from Galatians chapter four. So I'm starting right here at verse eight. Formerly, when you did not know God, you were enslaved to those that by nature are not gods. But now that you have come to know God, or rather, to be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elementary principles of the world, whose slaves you want to be once more? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I'm afraid I may have labored over you in vain. So pretty strong words uh, from Paul, especially towards the end of this little section. Uh, in scripture, but I mainly want to focus on verses eight and nine here tonight. Uh, again, when you did not know God, you were enslaved to those that by nature are not gods. That's pretty strong language too, if you think about it. Um, enslaved to those that by nature are not gods. What means of this earth are we enslaved to? Or in other words, what means of this earth are we so devoted to that it shapes the way that we think, it shapes the way that we speak, it shapes the way uh, that we act? Uh, there are a lot. And I think over the past year and a half, two years, uh, uh, a lot has become 
more prominent uh, in, 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 in the ways that our minds are shaped, the ways that our, sh our thoughts uh, are shaped. This is not God, right? By nature, are not gods. So let's think about our relationship between creator, God, and creature. Uh, we owe everything to him. We are fully devoted to him. We are fully dependent on him. We would not be here, okay, if it wasn't for God. We wouldn't have uh, the food, the water that we need. We wouldn't have the shelter that we need. We wouldn't have clothes, shoes, all of those wonderful things that are listed uh, in the catechism. That is given to us by God, our creator. We are his creatures. Um, we are fully subject to him. He's in control. He has total sovereignty is a word that we use a lot. That means rather simply, he has full control and power and authority over everything. How often do we kind of neglect that? Um, rather than shaping and focusing our words towards uh, worshiping our creator or, or giving thanks to our creator or praying to our creator, do we show that, um, let's say, focus and, and attention to other means, worldly means? A lot, a lot. And sometimes with that, that kind of oversteps the boundaries where our priorities are so out of whack, where church and Bible study and I would say even faith receiving the means of grace, receiving the sacrament, being in God's word, kind of takes uh, the back burner as opposed to other things that shape our thoughts and the ways that we think. And we become enslaved to those ideologies, enslaved to those uh, political activists, uh, enslaved to those um, social media, uh, sources that whatever they say, that's our gospel. That's not good. That's not good. But time and time again, we become enslaved to those means of this world, not God, but earthly and frankly, sinful uh, entities that we become so attached to. That's what Paul's saying. We become attached to all of these other things that are outside of scripture, outside of God, and they replace our faith. They overstep our faith. They supersede our faith. But this verse nine is so incredible, especially the way that he writes this. So, so knowing that, knowing that we become enslaved to outside sources, things that get our attention before God, that should not. But now that you have come to know God, or rather, this is key, or rather to be known by God. That's so incredibly important. Because what does that say? God does it. Not me. God knows me. God has turned to us. And, and that's kind of where we've been in Galatians. Uh, by the death and resurrection of Jesus, we have been made, as, as we studied before and earlier in chapter four, we have been made an heir. By the death and resurrection of Jesus, we have been redeemed. Not something that we have done. God sent Jesus for us. He did it. He knows us. Um, God is the one who is doing the action. God is the one who is doing the gospel. He has come to know us and bring us back into his fold, making us righteous again. And here's Paul's point. Knowing that, how could we go back? How could you go back to anything else? And now that I think about it, how timely is this that, that, that we're going to, to these words right after Easter? Having been filled with that Easter joy, having made that Easter proclamation that Christ is risen, having seen that the tomb is empty, and now moving forward on these, these next few Sundays, having seen the risen Lord appear to the disciples on the road to Emmaus, to the Marys, and, and he's alive, see him. Having seen Thomas uh, put his hands on the wounds of Jesus, 
he's here, he's alive. How could we go back? How could anything else supersede that? Knowing the gifts that God has given to us through our Savior Jesus, the rest truly is elementary, elementary principles of the world. How could anything come before acting in faith? Now, I do want to make this clear, and I'll kind of end on this. Yes, there are very important decisions uh, that we have to make in regards to the world that we live in, of course. And it is our job as Christians and as citizens and as people in this world to be informed on those decisions. So I'm not saying just throw all of that aside. I'm saying we keep our priority in line. We first and foremost act according to faith, act according to God's will as laid out for us in the scriptures, act according to God's will as laid out for us in the life of Jesus and seeing how he lived his life and how he responded to certain um, uh, events that transpired in, throughout his ministry as recorded in the scriptures. Uh, our faith is most important. We respond faithfully. So even when these uh, important decisions come about, and these important discussions are taking place as they, as they always are, we do so prayerfully, asking for guidance from our creator, as, as he is the one who has given us uh, my mind, my reason, all my senses, right? Uh, we prayerfully consider those things and, and we seek how we might best respond to them uh, as a Christian, what it means to love my neighbor. Uh, we're, we're going through those important decisions, whether it be political decisions or um, decisions for your family, for your children. We prayerfully consider those and, and how might that best reflect our faith and how we might serve our neighbor through that. So to wrap up tonight, uh, we remember who our creator is and, and, and how significant that is in our relationship to creator and creature. We are devoted to him first and foremost. We're also devoted to him first and foremost because of the gifts he's given to us. And we're thankful for the gift, namely, of Jesus and his death and resurrection that we might be redeemed and brought back into his fold, uh, knowing the gifts that he has prepared for us in heaven. So uh, as we move forward, uh, Paul's going to con continue now his kind of, I'll call it a, a pastoral response to um, uh, the receivers of this letter uh, to the Galatians. So blessings to you this night. Um, uh, hope to see you Sunday in worship, and we will talk to you soon.